Hmm. Oh, why, hello. I didn't see you there. Joel Clark here, author of, <laughs> well, you know. All right, so this is take two. Take one got disgusting because I've been sick for like four days and I was not prepared to have an hour long chat with you guys, um, which I did. And you're never going to see that take because it's so gross. I'm just like, my nose is leaking like a sieve and it's, uh, God, no, <laughs> just absolutely not. But you will get to see this take. This is the much shorter take where I get to the point very quickly. Okay, so <clears throat> writing the uh, the Ashura charms again, uh, I have come to a point where I now see them all spread out before me and they have revealed many truths to me. So this is kind of an interesting moment of the writing. So I've had to ask myself the very honest question of, did I go big enough with these techniques? I think I just called them charms. I did that a bunch in the last video. Uh, again, which you'll never see, thank God. Uh, never see the light of day. It's lost media um and the the answer is a little complicated um because in some ways i can't really meaningfully go bigger than i already did in the core book see the biggest thing you can find in the core book is a titan and they actually have a different way you have to interact with them like you can't just like punch well you can just punch and kick them if you're ridiculous but for the most part that doesn't really work um they, they have a threshold for how much they can get hurt, uh, the, the, basically their armor threshold. And if your attack isn't powerful enough to do more than that, it does nothing. It just bounces off harmlessly. So most of your attacks simply are not going to be powerful enough to hurt a Titan in a meaningful way. So their core health track, which is tremendous, by the way, biggest in the game, uh, for each one of these things, and there's, I think there's seven of them in the core book. Oh, wait, no, there's eight, because I did one that has two versions. Um, but yeah, so these things, ridiculous amounts of health, and even getting to the point where you can hurt them with an attack is next to impossible. Um, not only can they kill you with a large tree of extremely potent attacks, they passively can injure you with this huge pool of dice that are used to create natural disasters around you, just from the fact that they're huge and moving around and it's destroying the landscape. Uh, but also, they all have an apocalypse-scale super attack that blows up, like, the entire field that you're in and has uh, catastrophic implications for the surrounding tract. So they're basically, like, supreme-level techniques they can unleash once uh, in a gigantic boom. So these things are ludicrously difficult to fight. They, they literally occupy a higher scale of combat than everything else does. Um, and that's intentional. You are supposed to fight these on an uneven footing. You are the David and they're the Goliath. Um, that's how they're designed. And they're designed so that they force that paradigm onto players. It's actually impossible for players to get to the point where they operate on that scale. So you never fight them as equals. You always fight them in an unequal way. Just because their size is this whole new category of size. I always felt a version of these rules was lacking in stuff like Dungeons and Dragons, where technically you can fight things like dragons um, or the Tarrasque, which is kind of like the, the grand sire of all these guys, uh, at least rules wise. I mean, but like, you're not really meaningfully doing anything different than rolling an attack throw. Uh, somehow your tiny little pig sticker sword is sticking into Godzilla and injuring him in a meaningful way somehow i have no idea how that's supposed to work like what are you doing with it like in in older versions of DD, there's this kind of soft understanding that once you start departing level 10 you start kind of going into this mythical hero version of the game so like you start more or less like a, a, a schlub with a sword and you kind of become like you know, Aragorn or Legolas, you know, you become like a dude who's really capable and like almost super heroic. But like whenever you start getting into those higher levels, once you start getting like enough hit dice where it's like you comparably have hit points to like really big, powerful monsters, like the game kind of starts treating you like you are one. And, and that makes sense if you think about your character kind of turning into Heracles, you know? You you start to behave on this sort of mythical tier of capability where, where you can do stuff that, that normal people just cannot do. You more or less become a demigod. Um, 
so that that works in the more rules loose versions of earlier D&D, but like everything from 3 onward, it's not been clear why your tiny little sword can hurt Godzilla. Well, in my game there is a sort of mythical departure when it comes to the power scaling too. You have to be like, what is it, rank 10 or so before you really start going into the demigod stuff. Yeah, here we go. Eh. Yeah, so... Yeah, you get to the point of being a demigod, yeah, at rank 12, which is ridiculous. Um, but even a little bit before that, you can become a, as powerful as a minor god at rank 10, and 14 is a major god, so like Zeus. And I, I, I literally give Zeus as an example in this. Like, I give you an idea of, like, okay, if Zeus could do it, you could do it at this scale. And, yeah, Zeus's lightning bolts rank 14. Okay, that's, that's a pretty good... I'm okay with that. That works. So, um, because that departure is more explicit in my game, I think players can interact with it more intuitively and more concretely as well because the way effect charts work and the way the scaling works in this game. Um, but that still left me with a dilemma because e even though like I have these titans in the core book and you can fight them, and even though I could make it so that at the highest echelons of power, you could be, you could literally become one of these titans uh, with the Ashura. It's still implied that an Ashura is a scale even beyond that. <clears throat> Let me explain. In terms of Ashura's Wrath, which is the one of the greatest bedrocks of game design I could ever uh, reference. In Ashura's Wrath, you fight this guy called Wizen, and he's a big, fat, huge dude, right? And he's got like like a robot arm kind of thing. And whenever you go to fight him as a boss, like he used to be comrades back in the day before all the bad stuff went down and you became Ashura as you, as you know him. Like, he was your comrade, but now he's like a god, kind of. And like, when he first prances out, you're like, you're still the same fat, jolly fuck. Like, I'm gonna kick your ass, no big deal. And you kind of do. You fight him more or less like you would fight an equal, right? Uh, you throw punches, he throws punches. You throw kicks, he throws kicks. Like, you can jump and shoot fireballs at him. He can sit on you with his giant fat ass. I, look, I didn't design the game, okay? He's fat. And they make a lot of kind of, like, fat guy jokes about it. I'm not sensitive about it. But, like, I do feel a little bit seen. Um, my primary version of uh, offense is sitting on people nowadays. So, that, that works. That scans. Anyway... So, the fight's not going good for Wizen, because you're like a six-arm buff dude that can throw fireballs, and again, he is a fat dude. Um, he's a really big, strong fat dude, but he's still just a flabby dude without like any really impressive abilities. So, he gets his ass thoroughly handed to him, his jowls pounded in, and he's like, alright, enough of this. Time to show you what a god's made of. And he kind of just ascends and becomes this tremendous Godzilla-sized version of himself. Then you've got to fight him again. And the way you fight him is a little more like playing like a flight sim, kind of. Like one of those flight sim combat games where you're like, you're piloting your dude and you're dodging these tremendous attacks and you're throwing fireballs at him, kind of like you'd shoot bullets from your plane, you know. And he's just this gigantic moving target. He even summons like battleships to fire at you and stuff like this. And like he's like running around and, like, doof, doof, doof. and his attacks blow up the whole screen and you kind of defend in quick time events and things like that. So the way you have to approach fighting him as a player changes dramatically in that second stage, right? Um, and it's really cool. It's still dynamic and fun and you still feel like you have a lot of fine control over your character, but suddenly the scale is dictating a lot of what's happening. It's not just you moving around a battlefield, now you've kind of left the battlefield, and the interaction with him is defining the new paradigm of, of how you're fighting, right? So, it's, it's a different animal, and that's kind of how titans work in my game. Like, you kind of, their scale kind of defines how you interact with them. But then, after that, Wizen is still getting his jowls pounded in. And he's like, alright, I'm done with this. Time to show you exactly what it means to fight a god. And he ascends again, which is a thing that I wasn't anticipating, because usually you get one transformation as a bad guy. Oh no, not Wizen. He becomes the size of the whole planet. And he just, like, 
comes over the horizon like a big flabby dawn and he takes his finger and he's like time to die bitch and he smushes you like an ant um at this point you're no longer fighting a boss battle <coughs> that's the end of this chapter and then it's just a quick time event just to push his giant flabby finger off of you and punch it so hard that he dies somehow. You know, it, it. there's no more fight at that point. Like, at that point, you are actually fighting a god. So, it, it, you're not even, you're not even, like, fighting the Death Star and doing the trench run. You're literally just doing a quick time event. Like, cause there's no more fight left at all. And I, too, suffer with that scale. Because when you get to the level of fighting the Ashura that's what you're doing. You're an ant. Like, you're so insignificant compared to an Ashura in terms of the relative size difference alone that, like, it's not a fight anymore. Like, it, which is problematic in a game which is essentially about fighting. So, I spent an hour talking about that last time, and I went into a lot of really good, grisly details that... Again, I pray you never see. They're good points, and there was a lot of funny moments, but I was not at my best. I can already feel myself, like, you know, getting all stuffed up again, because, again, I've been sick for, like, four days. Um, <coughs> I'm going to boil it down here a little bit uh, to give you just kind of the essence of this. To get to Ashura level, I had to figure out a way within the rules framework I'd made, or by expanding it slightly that would allow you to fight something that was bigger, meaningfully bigger than a Titan. So I was like, okay, I've already got domain rules. And so I was really thinking consequentially about, can you fist fight a kingdom with the domain rules? And you can, but it has to be a series of wars that you launch, you know, like assaults and things like that. You have to destroy capitals, kill presidents, burn supply lines, raise villages, fist fight entire armies, and you could do all of that in the game, but it's not a single scene. You could realistically go and face down Godzilla in an epic fight scene and beat Godzilla within the core book. But what you could not really do, not realistically, is take on, you know, a tremendous multi-tracked empire, like a whole region, in a single fight scene. You just can't. None of the scale allows you to operate there. You could blow up a field and wreck the surrounding tract. So you could you could take out a capital and and level a mountain and just completely change the landscape. That would be a huge deal, right? You know? You you can drop a nuclear bomb on a nation, but that won't necessarily destroy the nation. It might mortally wound it, it might cripple it, it might change it forever, but, like, you're probably not going to end that whole nation with just that, right? Not if it's a good-sized nation. I'm talking about multiple hexes here. And when I'm saying good size, I mean, like, a hundred hexes or more. Remember, each hex is a tract, so a tremendous level of stuff. So the whole domain there, that whole thing that is, like, region-sized, which is... You know, hex after hex after hex. So, so yes, um, you can't do that in one scene. The scale of the game doesn't operate that way. But that works in our favor here, because I don't want the scale to work that way. Again, I want the scale of the encounter of fighting an Ashura to be set by the Ashura. You know, you want to fist fight the things that are bigger than gods? Okay, you can do that, but it's going to be kind of the same thing as going in and saying, like, I want to fist fight this entire nation. It's going to take a while. It's going to be multiple scenes of over-the-top violence as you destroy altars and blow up demigods and raise uh, priesthoods and, you know, rip up the landscape. You know, the stuff that the lone wolfists are awesome at. And then after a prolonged series of doing that, you could say that you've realistically fought and vanquished an Ashura. You know, you actually can meaningfully destroy them the same way you can meaningfully destroy a domain with just raw violence. Um, so I was kind of delighted when I realized that I kind of had the tools necessary to make the Ashuric scale with what I have in the core book. So 
It implies design that is very fascinating to me uh, because it means that each one of the Ashura is one of their supreme techniques is going to have a I become the landscape technique. And this I become the landscape technique has to do a couple of things. First of all, it has to meaningfully link the domain into the characterhood of the character who has that. So if you are Ravana and you have that technique, then you are your throne. You know, you are your your palace. And everything that grows out of that, as your nation expands into the do nearby domains and you make more and more of yourself, that's essentially giving you more limbs and health and, like, largeness to absorb damage. So it will matter a lot if your, um, your core domain gets destroyed, if your HQ gets blown up, but not significantly more than being, say, mortally injured for a mortal martial artist would. Like, if you get stabbed in the chest and you're bleeding out, that really sucks, but it's not necessarily a career ender to someone as tough as a lone wolf fist. It certainly can be, um... But it isn't necessarily the end of the line. Just like for Ravana, if you go and you destroy his avatar and you blow up, you know, his magical throne and all of that, that's a fat L for the Prince of All Demons, right? Like, that that definitely sucks. But he's probably not down for the count. He still has legions of demons and dozens, if not hundreds, of hexes of him surrounding you as Demon City. All of which he should be able to act through. So... The implication of being the landscape is that I'm going to have to write an er version of this technique, which kind of covers the broad strokes of what it means to be a domain instead of just having a domain, um, and then use that as the general template. And I, and I've already done this a few times. Uh, I did this with like the elemental rules, like elemental control techniques all have kind of the same er template. Um, you know, a, a lot of the supreme ones, a lot of the transformation ones have the same er template. You know, a lot of the big attacks do, the big booms. Um, it just, it makes for a more cohesive design, and it means I don't, I don't really have to carve out new conceptual space for things that are going to be not identical, but functionally extremely similar. It's kind of the same concept as having code words, and, or keywords. I might just make a keyword, just to make it easier on myself, so I'm not just repeating text over and over. But the point is... I cracked the Asherick scale, I think. Uh, this might bear some playtesting, play because I've never actually playtested at the domain level for any meaningful length of time. I've had like two or three sessions where I playtested at that level. So it's still largely unexplored territory for me. And I feel like people are really going to want to dig into it once they can become their own domains. When you can actually become a chaotic ocean of burning uh, incandescent oil or an entire desert filled with the dreams of people that never lived or a mountain made of flesh and bone and blood, um, I feel like when you can turn into that stuff, you're going to be a little more invested in the domain rules. You know, you're going to be like, oh, I want to be an Ashra. I want to do the stuff they do. And it also means that just learning the technique doesn't make you Ravana immediately. You've still got to expand your empire to be as big as him. So I like that a lot because it means that I can kind of, I can put Ravana in the game and you can fight him and you'll still have the same powers that you can get as a player. I know, right? It's the whole goal that I had. I'm very excited. Okay, so this is one third the size of that last one and considerably less disgusting. So this is the one I'm posting up. Um, it's not quite as complete, but it covers the same broad strokes, and I'm very proud of it. So, this is the technique I am writing tonight and tomorrow, by the way. So, get ready for that on the Patreon, you wonderful turkeys, you. And I will fist you later.